guys, we are back. I'm making sure that we're recording. I'm looking at the screen, making sure, making sure we're actually recording, and we're we're back with bikini, behind the bikini episode number 53. We're on season two because we're in year two, so that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, we just did these a second ago, but we figured we'd get one done because we got North Americans coming up. And then I had this fantastic idea yesterday of doing of doing one in person. So we're going to do one in person because we're both going to be at North Americans. Um, so before we get rolling on this, like, comment, subscribe, all the buttons everywhere we are. Um, this is going to be a fun one. We just decided to go in and pull some random questions to ask each other kind of thing. So you guys can get to know us a little bit better. We'll probably get to know each other a little bit better with some of these questions too. Um, I just thought, you know, cause this is something that, uh, was kind of brought about because, um, if y'all watch bro chat at all, they do this kind of thing all the time where they just ask really random questions of each other and you get to know the guys a little bit better. So I thought maybe we could do something like that fun. But, uh, before we get into all of that, how was your weekend? Oh, it was good. Yeah, not not a lot to report. Just prepping. <laughs> how was um, I know it's boring. I know. How was Arizona though? How was the show? The show was fantastic. Um, yeah, obviously a dare one, so that was super exciting. Uh, we didn't really we didn't have any uh, amateurs there, so it was cool. We just got to kind of go to the pro show in the morning, and then um, it was only a few hours later for finals. So it was great. It was a really well run show. It was uh, Wings of Strength and Linda, one of Linda Marie shows, and it was just really well done. Um, really focused on the athletes, so that was really cool to see, especially in my my new backyard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was really it was really awesome, and it was all in a casino as well, so everything was like right on site. Um, so yeah, it was really it was awesome. Did they have NPC or was it just pros? They did have NPC, but it was an okay. all women show. Okay, I thought I think like the first couple of years they didn't even have NPC, right? They just had pros. I think the first couple of years they did this. To be honest, I don't know. Like this is my first time really being exposed to West Coast shows. I've been okay. always in the East Coast, so right. this is this is all a, a new experience for me as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was. You know, we're going back five, six years ago now when they did the first. They did it the first time, and I think it was. And I think the first time they did it, it was just female bodybuilding. But that was if it wasn't just female bodybuilding, that was absolutely just the focus. Was the main okay. thing. Well, I only um, competed, started competing five years ago, so yeah. that's probably outside of my realm anyway of knowing. <laughs> yeah, they um, because they they started the show because female bodybuilding had been taken out of the Olympia, mm. so that's why they started the show in the first place because that was like their Olympia kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then when Jake Wood took over the Olympia, they brought female bodybuilding back, and so they kind of created this show around it being an all female show, um, and with all the, the female divisions and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it almost did seem like um, I want to say like a mini Olympia in yeah. that way. Jake mm -hmm. Wood was definitely there. Uh, right. Tarek was there wa walking around representing yep. Olympia TV. Um, they had like all of the Olympia booths out out in the hallway for people to purchase Olympia items. So it definitely yes. had that that definite feel to it with the, the important people being there as well that will be at the olympia in seven weeks yeah because if you look at it um andrea shaw she has won that show four times and then she's also won the olympia four times female bodybuilding this year what, what's her first name cho is her last name the, oh. the beater who was oh, it the beater know. Gosh, I, I'm gonna I, look it up right now. I thought I, I thought Evie won, or Ivy. I forget how she says her name. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna find it right now. So it was and Angie. Is that how you pronounce it? And Angie Yo Yo Yo. That's because Ivy, Ivy, you're thinking of took third. Okay. Sure, because they had the Olympia battle. Um, yes. Yeah, she won it. So I just don't know how to pronounce her name. Um, Angie. Angie. Yeah, it's Angie. Yep. Is she the one with the dreads? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's. Yep. yep. Yeah, okay, so awesome. I didn't pay attention completely to the results, but I know she beat Andrea. That was a big deal because Andrea has been the reigning champion for four years for this show and for the Olympia and everything as well. So to see her get beat is, is was a little bit crazy. Um, but I think it was based on conditioning because um, Andrea Shaw has got the the full round muscles and stuff like that. But Angie came in with the with the harder conditioning, so she ended up beating her on that. So that was a big deal on the female bodybuilding side. Um, but yeah, so. 
So that was kind of where that show originated from. Got it. Started, then they added all the all the female divisions in, which I think is interesting because I'm trying to think in the back of my head if there are any shows out there that are 100% male. I don't think so. I don't think there are. Yeah, not ones that like, you know, claim like male only. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's, there's this one for the females plus Nashville Fit Show. And I feel like there's a couple other ones too. Girl Power and Girl Clash. Power. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Those are the only crazy? ones I know of. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, people know the women's divisions <laughs> mostly bring the ticket sales, uh, minus, you know, men's bodybuilding, but they only mm -hmm. have very limited shows per year. So. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just saying, so I'm, I'm interested because I, you know, you know, I listen to some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and stuff like that too. And I, I would really love it if, and I'm sure this is happening more, but I would really love it if the IPB would come to us female athletes a lot more and like ask us what we want, things like that. You know what I mean? Cause I know they do that with the men a lot. I know the men are a lot more vocal too. Um, I think as far as women are concerned, we're probably some of the most vocal women out there, you and I, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So, you know, there's, there's, but I know we talked to Sandy, we talked to Becky, we talked to uh, Bernadette, you know, all of the, all the major um, people in the, in the industry for females and stuff like that's concerned, Adela, all that stuff too. So like, you know, I think, I think we're getting, I think we're getting heard finally, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, you know, we're, we're in a, a sport with a lot of leaders and a lot of different ideas. And, you know, I'm sure yeah. that there's a, a lot of this, you know, mm -hmm. happening and, you know, what we think is a good idea and somebody else, you know, they might not think that's a good idea. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard, like anything to hear all that noise and kind of know, you know, what direction to go in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the biggest thing, and we talked about this on the last podcast right now is just, you know, the amount of shows that there are right now, it's making it very difficult for promoters to be able to make enough money um, in order to, you know, kind of keep these shows going. You know, yep. in Florida, there's three shows everywhere every weekend, you know, yep. so instead of one show each weekend or one show every other weekend, these athletes are so spread apart. So promoters are seeing numbers at hard, you know, under 80 athletes, mm -hmm. which is nothing, nothing, mm -hmm. you know, and um, unfortunately, the sport can't survive just Correct. on pros, you know, we survive right. on the amateurs and the NPC. So um, it's gonna, it's very interesting, you know, at the end of the day, everybody has to remember too the IFBB and the NPC is a business, right? right? So they have to take feedback, and they have to make sure that they are creating this business catered to their clientele that is supposed to be spending money with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my opinion, especially in the female divisions, I think there's just way too many shows, way, way too many shows, I think that 30% of the shows can be cut at this point. And okay. I'm only seeing kind of more come and to be honest when i see more of these shows i'm like why why like, it's another show in the middle of nowhere with yeah. not a big promoter that would like really bring like it doesn't make sense to me so th yeah. those are more of like what i'm kind of talking into ears about is like why are there so many shows mm -hmm. and like why why are you guys choosing this location it's so hard to get to like mm -hmm. really trying to to cater it more to the athlete experience with our NPC and amateur athletes. Cause at the end of the day, they are the future of this sport and they are the yeah. ones that are going to help the promoters continue to keep these shows going for everybody. Pros and hundred percent, hundred percent. And you know, what I'm hearing again from the back, back talks and stuff like that is that a lot of these shows are going to be gone next year, meaning they're not going to get sanctions granted to them again. They're going to have to do a better, they have, just have to do a better, better vetting process of who can actually promote a show. Because I think people get um, enamored of the idea of promoting a show and having their name attached to a show, but it's, there's a lot more that goes into that. You know, ever since I've started Cuties Conquering the Stage, people have said, you should promote a show. I'm like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> like it's people don't understand like there's a lot that goes into promoting an event period and i just don't want to do that more than once a year i just don't want to do it more than once a year it's a lot it's hard you know and, the, and when you've got people coming behind you with just that just are throwing shows up and not doing anything that actually takes away from what you're doing as a show promoter too so it's very difficult there's some, that's something i would never do i would never promote a show unless unless it was with you we talked about this maybe we should do a behind the bikini show <laughs> That would be totally like that. that would be like our own, you know, thing yeah. though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but because we know the price tag on promoting a show, like you know, right. 
other than the things that you see visually, right? Renting of the ballrooms and the stage right. production. And, you know, they have to pay the photographers and the video, like all of those things that we see, but don't necessarily think of. You also have to think about all the fees on the back end. Like promoters yes. have to pay the IFBB and the NPC to, in order to host a show. And right. I know some of those numbers, and I'll tell you right now, they are not cheap. Like it is not cheap to put together a show. And, um, you know, I know pr a lot of promoters right now, I'm talking to a lot of them and they're all losing their butts on yep. these shows, but they want to keep them going in hopes that the numbers are going to come around next year. And they want to keep giving back to the athletes so that they keep coming back next yes. year. So it's like this, are you robbing Peter to pay Paul, hoping that Paul can afford it eventually? You know, like yeah. it's, it's really, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult yeah. to navigate right now. And as coaches, you know, we have to be better too at making sure that we support the promoters that are taking care of our athletes versus throwing them in these one-off shows yes. that it protects their experience. And that also protects the promoters that are actually giving back to the athletes as well. Yes. And then on the other side of that too, a conversation I'm having with my clients now as well is about the natural shows, because for example, the Ben Weeder this year, last year, you just had to have competed in an NPC show prior to Ben Weeder in order to actually compete in the Ben Weeder show, because it's a pro qualifier. So you have to qualify in order to go into it. Um, this year, you have to have competed in a natural NPC show in order to be able to go into the Ben Weeder. And, you know, the girls are complaining about it. I said, listen, I said, you can't have it both ways. I said, you know, if you want natural shows, you have to support them. I said, you know, at the end of the day, I said, I understand that you're, you know, upset that you got to do another show in order to qualify. I get that. I understand that part of it. I said, but they, the promoters aren't making any money on natural shows. I said, so if you want natural shows, you have to show up and compete in them. I mean, it's like one hand has to help the other one. You know what I mean? So I understand that stipulation. I get it. I understand why they're putting it into place because it's hard enough to get numbers at normal NPC shows, let alone natural NPC shows. And then on top of that, you have to do drug, drug testing and everything like that too, which is an added expense in natural in natural shows that you don't have in the normal shows. So it's like, guys, you, you just, you, you got to put up or shut up. It's like either, either you go to the shows and you compete in them or you don't complain that you don't have any. <laughs> Right. Because right. why are these natural shows coming in now? Because yeah. at one point within the last couple of years, that was feedback that people right. wanted more natural shows. That's right. They listen, they're implementing them. Mind you, this kind of backtracks on what we were just talking about a few minutes ago that we need less shows. They're adding right. more shows now. Yep. And now those numbers at those natural shows are very, very, very small. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's because they're new and, you know, people want to go Absolutely. to like the bigger shows over the yeah. But remember, you guys asked for this. And that's now right. Right. You so got to build it. You got to grow gotta build from it somewhere. Up. Yeah. You got to grow from somewhere. And if you don't, if you don't put the support in now, you're not going to get it. It's like, you can't expect a promoter to plunk down money for the sanction and for the venue and all the things we're just talking about. And then you don't show up, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's like somebody, somebody's got it. Something's got to get something. Absolutely. Gotta get. Yeah. You know, so last year, I believe things. it was at Atlantic Coast and it was, he ended up, T Tim Gardner ended up making a two day show. He did the NPC on yeah. um, Saturday or maybe it was back to back. Um, but I remember him saying like he had to rent the ballroom like an extra day, yes. which a ballroom rental is eight to $10,000 mm -hmm. a day. So, you know, you have to think like those things add up. Yeah. Um, and the numbers at that show, that first natural show were none. I mean, yeah. they were putting like bikini girls and figure and having a yeah. crossover and just because they were trying to get their registration fees and, yeah. and I get it. But you know, again, like we're going to have to like, you know, we requested it. Now we're going to have That's to right. fulfill our duty of like showing up to those shows. And I completely see too, why they would change the qualification for Ben Weider, especially with that feedback, you yes. know, they're like, okay, like this is a natural show. So now you're going to get qualified at a Natural, natural show because show. we provide that's them. Right. That's right. You know, and again, I just said, listen, I've got a couple of girls that are prepping for Ben Weeder and they've got to get on a, on a stage prior to that. And there's one that's in October. It's about a month before the Ben Weeder. I said, I understand that our goal date is Ben Weeder. That's what we want to get to. I said, but you got to get on stage prior to, I mean, I understand it's cutting your prep short, but you really just have to get on stage. I was like, use it as practice. Use it as a way to get through your posing a few times, you know, try out your look, all those kinds of things. I was like, and then we dial you in for Ben Weeder. 
And I have I had one girl, she was like, but I don't want to go on stage not ready. I said, I get that. I understand that. I was like, but what do you want? I said, do you want to get on stage not ready or do you not want to get on stage? Because it's going to be one or the other. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just got to do it. You have to. And it's, it's okay. Like, come in at 70, 80% for the, for the, you know, the show in, in October to qualify you for Ben Weeder. And then come in at your 100% for Ben Weeder because that's your main show. And right. that's how you do it. That's how Absolutely. you do it. Absolutely. That's how you approach NPC. Uh, at any any show like i want to come into that warm-up show about 85 90 yeah. percent want them to give us tangible feedback then we show up to the nationals with that feedback completed that's right absolutely so you know we do we do what you got to do in order to make it work and you know i think that's one thing that's that's good about bodybuilders in general we tend to find ways to make it work one way or another <laughs> you know you you do or you're not ready <laughs> that's right that's right. Well, going on to like, we got now, you know, North Americans coming up this coming weekend. And, you know, last week on a, on a podcast, I was talking about how I didn't want to go. <laughs> I'm just like, I just really don't want to go. But I was like, I, I, I have to. I've got, now I've got three girls. I had two initially. Now I've got three. So I was like, well, it is what it is. I was like, let's make the most of it. You know, A, Jamie will be there. And I'm thinking in my head, that's the, that's the last time she's going to get a chance to see me before I actually get on stage and compete. I said, so it'll be a good opportunity for me to get in front of her. I said, B, you're going to be there. Let's do an in-person podcast. You know, we make, we make the most of it. You know, it's going to be a two-day two day trip. It is what it is. We're going to figure it out. I'm going to drive there. We're going to get the girls on stage, make them happy, all that kind of stuff, and, and make it work. You know, and get, do do what we got to do to add other things in there to make it worth it. You know, like, yeah. do what you got to do. Yeah. That is, I mean, you just adapt. It is what it is. Like, there's no reason yeah. to get stressed over it. If you yeah. have to do it, you have to do it. And you just try to make the best of it. Like, that's yeah. literally all you can do, especially when we're this far out. You know, we're definitely in the prep fields right now. We're less than a month out. Like, yeah. now's grind time, you know. So be, picking trips is has to be very strategic and has yes. to be worth it. Um, You know, I don't want to go to Pittsburgh either. I'll be honest. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you guys know I do not like that city. It is very yeah. hard. Um, and I'm going to be there for longer because I have the road to the Olympia with JM yeah. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So the show ends Sunday night and then we get Monday just sitting around in Pittsburgh because there's nothing going on. It's Labor Day and then we'll we'll be at the uh, Pittsburgh and PCI BB gym all day on Tuesday. Then finally yeah. get to come home on Wednesday. Um, but it, it is what it is, you know, and then the following yeah. weekend, I'm literally home for two nights and Drew wanted to go to this concert in Lake Tahoe and yeah. believe me, I want to go hang out in Lake Tahoe, but I'm at three weeks out at that point. So do I want to go to this concert? Absolutely not. But I love my husband a lot and he yeah. deserves to, you know, go have some fun and me have some fun with him too. So this is, you know, also that hard decision in prep where it's like, this is not worth my marriage. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like I'm going to yeah. go out enjoy the weekend with him. I'm going to be exhausted. I'm going to be trying to figure out how I'm going to stay up till midnight at this, you know, two-day concert and then get up in the morning and do it. But I'm going to figure it out. If it yeah. means enough to you, you'll figure it out. You'll figure yeah. out a way. Well, same thing over here. You know, um, we got tickets to see Kevin Hart. Fun. Um, so, yeah, September 14th. So, you know, initially, again, when we were looking at show dates and stuff, that was a weekend that we were looking at doing. I'm like, but we already got tickets for Kevin Hart. So I was like, we're going to go. And then the following week is my birthday. And then that's and that's also Sasquatch weekend, which I'm not I, I made the decision. I told Jamie, I said, I'm not doing Sasquatch. I said, so that was that, you know, me deciding to go to North Americans and deciding to not do Sasquatch kind of coincided with each other. Um, so I said to myself, I was like, well, at least you'll see me in person when I'm about a month out from, from these shows. Um, <clears throat> and like we've talked about, Sasquatch for me, it just doesn't make sense. You know, it right. just doesn't make sense. I'm like, why am I going to travel for, you know, five, six weekends in a row? It just doesn't make sense. Right. So, so that, you know, again, going back to, I want to have fun with, for my birthday, which is kind of the week before when we go to Kevin Hart, you know, and people are always like, well, I can't have cake on my birthday. I don't give a shit about cake. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't care. I'm like, I really don't. I'm like, I'll be fine on my macros. I actually am better off. Last night I had a diet soda for the first time. I don't even know how long this diet, diet root beer. And my stomach hurt so bad from those freaking sweeteners. I was like, that was not worth it at all. Zero. Not worth it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know, so it's just not, it's not something that appeals to me. I'm like, I know what foods do well with my body, and I know what foods don't. And I was like, there's nothing that I could eat on my birthday that I care about that much that's going to hurt my stomach. So yeah, you know, you, you just you make those concessions and things like that, you know, and you, you got to realize if your goals are bigger than than a piece of cake, then you go for your goals, you know. <laughs> Bottom cake, line. Cake doesn't really do it for me. I don't. Either. I don't. 
Yeah. I'm more of an icing person. So I know icing? People, Interesting. Yeah. I would sit and eat a whole tub of icing. Interesting. I've actually yeah. done that before. That was after a show. This was years ago. I went and I actually bought a tub of icing. That was wow. my, that was my post show treat. That's all I wanted was, was frosting. Damn. That's a lot of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of sugar. It says the woman that had a stomach ache from a diet soda. <laughs> but see, I don't have stomach aches from normal sugar. I have wow. stomach aches from artificial sweeteners, like we've talked about. Like if they're yeah. crap, I can't. And it's funny because usually I don't have that problem with sodas too bad. Um, but it was it was uh, root beer zero, so it had like the healthier for you sweeteners in it, and that's what. Screws my stomach up. Those I'm were like, the worst ones, yeah. Which, by the way, I just got into this on a Facebook group. Um, just because it's not sugar doesn't mean it doesn't have calories in it. So <laughs> this is something to be paying attention to with your your labels. Like, if you're looking at like stevia or monk fruit or whatever, like these are these these sugar substitutes, they're not artificial. They still have carbs. <laughs> They still have sugar in them. Like if you look at the the ingredients on this particular one that they were talking about on Facebook, a serving has 12 grams of carbs in it. That's, it's not artificial sweetener. <laughs> it's sweetener. It's just plain sweetener. It's just not, it's just not sugar. That's, that's, so you gotta be careful of that stuff. That's not just free food, you know? Yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta, I just, I gotta eat milk today. I gotta zip it. <laughs> I'll okay. be honest. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Duh. Mm-hmm. I know. Duh. <laughs> no, I, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. It's just you know, it's just it's just silly things like that. You know, that it's just just like guys, like pay attention to what you're doing. You know, pay attention. Just just look and pay attention. Yeah. I mean, like it's if you are in a prep, like nothing should be going into your mouth that you are not tracking yeah. in your MyFitnessPal. And if you are following a meal plan even more of a reason if it's not listed on your meal plan, then you shouldn't be eating it. Yeah. You know, it's, I just think that people like severely underestimate, like they'll just tell themselves this story of like, Oh, it's a liquid. So it doesn't have calories. It's like, no, it yeah. doesn't work that way. Like yeah. a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. Like yep. your body doesn't know, Oh, this calorie is coming from a liquid versus a McDonald's cheeseburger. Like it's, it's your body recognizes it the same. So yeah. just when in doubt, scan it scan it and ask your coach, you know, like, do I track this? Do I not? Should I eat this? Should I not? If you're in a prep phase, you know, but even if you're in off season, like those things add up. That's where girls go so wrong in the off season is that they tell themselves the story of I'm in off season. I don't have to track this. I don't have to do this. And it's, that's the lie you tell yourself. And then before you know it, if you really, really were to truly add up those bites, cheats, liquids that you're not tracking, that could be an extra 500 to 1,000 calories depending 100%. on what it is per week. 100%. And people are like, I don't know why I'm gaining weight. I'm following my plan. I'm like, you're tracking, but you're also eating things off to the side that That's aren't right. tracked. That's right. Something simple, like one thing that I, I did the last few days um, is with like my spinach, I put uh, sauerkraut with it, right? Sauerkraut is supposed to be good for your digestion and all that kind of stuff too. And then I'm not feeling like I have to put like dressing on my salad and all that kind of shit too. But I still log it. I still scan it. It's five calories, but I still scan it. You know, it's still sauerkraut. It's still got calories, you know? Well, and the thing too is when you're in prep is that the sauerkraut or foods have sodium in it. That's so right. you're tracking your sodium load That's and right. then you're not adding the sauerkraut and you might be over or under consuming on sodium. That's right. So there's, it's, it's different things to, over than just the macros. You know, something else too is, you know, sauerkraut is good for your digestion, but let's say that you're eating something off plan that was causing the digestional issues. Yeah. Of course, I'm looking in your MyFitnessPal because I'm trying to figure out what food it could be but if that food that you're eating off plan or drinking off plan in particular mm-hmm. is causing the issues i don't see that so i that's can only right. assume from what's in your my fitness files what's going into the mouth yeah. um you know so something like a diet soda like if it was tracked i would be like oh okay well this was new la- this week so maybe you're you know being affected by that but sugar's yeah. in there so it, it is it seems so simple but i think that people just believe that story that they start to tell themselves and we've all been there yeah. I've been there a hundred times. I'm there yeah. now. Like I've had a two, two diet sodas last night. Like yeah. I was in so much hunger. That is not like me, but that's what I grabbed for. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we've all been there, but you have to also be realistic at the end of the day of what the goal is, what you're working towards. And if you're not getting there, then you have to really be real with yourself. And that's when you have to say, maybe it is that one diet soda a day mm-hmm. that I'm drinking. That's not getting me toward my goal. Yeah. Well, I just had a conversation with one of the girls I uh, my posing thing yesterday. She was asking me a lot. She's like, I feel inflamed. You think I'm going through menopause? Like that was literally how she how she said to me. I was like, 
I mean, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know anything about your training or your diet or what you're eating or what you're consuming. You very well could be going through menopause, but I don't know. <laughs> like, you, you can also, also just be inflamed. Yes, yeah, you could also just be eating like, too yeah. much sodium. I don't know. Like, right. Yeah. You know, it depends. And, yeah, it depends. It's always an it depends. I'm like, you have to dig in and figure out where the, where the problem is. And I just suggested to her to just do an elimination diet and figure out if there was something in there that was causing the, the inflammation and things like that. Like, that was the first thing. I'm like, but I don't know enough about you to, to say, yeah, you're going through menopause. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Especially menopause. That's such yeah. a, a, a tough and broad you know, thing to diagnose, especially yep. on lab work, like lab work can look yeah. perfect, but then they're, you know, they're not getting a cycle. And then, you know, it's, yeah. everything is so intricate, you know? Yep. Well, I think that that's part of it too. Like some people don't want to dig in and figure it out. They just want to be told, they just want to be told this is what's wrong with you. Right. Oh, I, I, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, even the elimination diet that you yeah. just, there's been so many times that a client is having an issue and I tell them, Hey, like, let's go on a meal plan for a couple of weeks. I guarantee that you're going to lose weight. And if not fire me, you know, like yeah. whatever. Yeah. And every single time they come back to me, they're dropping weight and they feel better, but mm -hmm. that's our defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, last season when I was just eating within my macros and I was, you know, getting, you know, funner foods in there and breads yeah. and things like that. And Drew's like, you, if you want to be an elite athlete, you need to eat like an elite athlete. Yeah. And my defense was mean to him. I was like, why? And did that. But when I did switch, I was fuller. I was yeah. more satiated. I yeah. was dropping weight. I mentally was a lot clearer. My brain yep. fog was better. And I felt better. And yep. if I wasn't so defensive, I would have gotten this a lot sooner. And there's so many times where like, I'll bring that up to a client. And they're like, no, I'm not ready for that yet. And I'm like, okay. And then three or four weeks goes by. And then finally I get them on the meal plan and the next check-in. Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I'm so, and, yeah. you know, so it's like, if I'm telling you to do something, it's not because I want you to suffer anymore. Believe yep. me. But sometimes yeah. suffering is needed, but it's because I'm trying to help something. And, and right. the ch the choices are not what should be made at this close to stage, you know? That's right. And I just had this conversation with a new client. She just got off of a show last week and she's like, oh, I just put all my artificial sweeteners back in just so you know. I said, that's fine. I said, you can do that. I said, however, I said, you're complaining about how hungry you are. I said, those artificial sweeteners are not going to help, you know? Right. It might be better off if you just stay bland for a little bit because your hunger hormones are going to go freaking crazy. I said, and then you add in the artificial sweeteners and that's going to make it even worse. So, so I'm not saying you can't have it, but I'm just saying that this thing that you're having a problem with, there's a solution. Yeah. You know? And that's truly going from one extreme right. back to the other, right? Right. And I don't yes. mind added sugars like like you're saying in the off mm -hmm. season, but slowly introduce right. them. Like once a week, add one thing. Make sure you yep. feel good. Add enough. Like don't go from zero to a hundred. That's, That's the right. worst thing you could do for your body. Like remember how much your body goes through yep. in a prep. And like protect your body in a reverse phase. Like that does not mean giving it all food in sight again. Like yes. give your body the chance to fully recover and heal itself from the inside out. Yeah. And that's going to help your preps in the future. 100%. But again, we, we start to tell ourselves that's really like, oh, I'm done. And, and then I can eat all this food. And it's like, no, like if you treat your off season or your improvement season, just like you do your prep, because you're still an athlete at the end of the day in the off yeah. season, you're not, not an athlete. And then we've mm -hmm. talked about this. If anything, it's the most important time to stay on plan, right. you know, so stick to your whole foods, add a few, you know, fun things in there. Talk to your coach about getting an untracked meal in there. But Monday through Friday, you still have the same mindset of I'm an athlete and I'm making mm -hmm. improvements, you know, that's right. and that's the, the people that really, truly are fighting and working toward that pro card and making the most amount of changes in their improvement season are the yeah. ones that keep that mentality. That, and also they're the ones that tend to be able to progress faster too, meaning like we can add more food, we can drop the cardio faster, we can up the weights more, you know, all the, the intensity goes up, you know, all those kinds of things. When you, when you know exactly what your body is doing, it's so much easier to progress you. It's so much easier to get you to the next step, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like just taking those little, those few, those few things, those few little things and just making them like, like I tell people all the time, I'm like, yeah, I'm on macros, but I pretty much eat the same thing every day. Yeah. Pretty much eat the same thing every day, yeah. you know, especially now because we're getting into prep and everything like that. I might switch. Like I, this morning I was talking about how I switched out my bagels because I've got lower carbs now. So <clears throat> instead of doing a full Dave's bagel, I've got the mini bagels now instead. So it's like, it's still the same food group, still the same food, basically, but it's just smaller. 
<laughs> and the same thing with my, my bananas. I went from having a large banana to having a small banana now. Like I make sure they're under 100 grams, you know, things like that. So it's still the same food. It's just becoming less. <laughs> that's all. <Yeah. laughs> so at the end of the day, it ends up being about the same thing, you know, I, and that's how I am even in off season. And yes, I go out and I have fun with my husband. Like we just talked about, you're going to go to the go to the concerts. just like that. I go out and have fun. I have my, my treats. I have my things like that in the off season. But my basis, my basis is always the same. It's always the same, you yeah. know? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's that athlete mentality. You know, yeah. it's either you're going to choose, you're going to, it's, it's a decision at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Like, and a lot of people struggle, you know, on the weekends. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a mindset. It's a choice, um, yep. you know, and, and a lot of my athletes, especially are in, in off season on macros. Like to me, like if you're truly craving something like, get it in your macros. Yeah. Like, try, like I'm right. just making effort to get it in your macros. Or if yes. you know that you're going to be overeating and going out, then, you know, make the meals in the earlier part of the day lighter, you know, like yeah. make that effort or that conscious decision, or, you know, here's a better one. Simply talk to me about it. If you're in yeah. that reverse space, you know, like let's come up with that, that neutral ground. But yeah. a lot of the times people don't communicate and then it's, it's too late. Um, you know, I had several athletes at masters nationals. Two of them are now on macros and cardio higher and lower relatively than they were in their off season previous to prepping because mm -hmm. they followed their reverse diet to a T. Mm -hmm. And then there's a couple that haven't followed their reverse and now their cardio is still super high. Food is still super low. They're eight to 10 pounds already above stage weight. And it's like, I, I have to stay conservative in yes. order to offset the food off plan. I don't feel comfortable increasing food when I know that you're increasing food by yourself yeah. outside of it. So it's like, how do you if put yourself in my position <clears throat> as a coach? Yep. What yep. would you do if this yep. was you and you were receiving this check-in? And I think that's where a lot of the times, like when people are sending those check-ins week after week after week, I'm overeating, I'm overeating, I'm overeating, I'm overeating. Eventually you're not struggling anymore. Like you are, you are choosing to do right. that. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. But what is going to change? You have to acknowledge that and then force the change. Maybe that's yeah. checking in with me more frequently. Maybe that's removing some things from the house. Maybe that yeah. is going back on a meal plan until you're fully reversed out of it. And then you can feel like you can handle macros again. Yeah. That looks different for different people. But yeah. um, it's scary when you're, you know, eight to 10 weeks post-show and your food is still at 1400 calories yeah. and you're still on 45 minutes of cardio a day as a coach. It's like, where do I go from here? You know? Yeah. And then you got the other uh, flip side of that too, where people don't want to let off. You know what I mean? Like they want to keep the, the 50 minutes, 60 minutes of cardio. They want to keep the low calories. It's like, well, no, we got, we got to get you out of this too. You know what I mean? So there's both sides of that. You know, I have, I have girls now who just lifestyle clients that they're like, they're happy about the number on the scale because it's going down. And I'm like, yeah, but you're not eating. <laughs> I was like, you've got to eat. I was like, we want to get you on stage next year. Like I was, I'm right now. I was like, want to get you on stage next year? I said, you've got to eat. I was like, I, I know you're happy about the scale going down. I said, but that's not our goal right now. That's not what I, that's not what I want to see right now. I said, I'm, I'm glad you're happy, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't need you putting weight on either, but I'm like, you, you need to eat. You need to eat. You know, like there's that I, for me, I don't know. I work with, again, I work with a lot of women over the age of 35. So for me, that's the harder part. Like most of the women don't want to eat. Most of them don't want to, don't want to put on the extra size. They don't want to see that number go up. And it's really, really hard to, um, to and that's why for most women, a prep is easier, right? Because right. in their mind, that makes sense. Less yep. food, more cardio, skills decreasing. Yep. I'm in the right spot. This is what I'm yep. supposed to do. Every prep is hard, but in their mind, they're at peace with that because that's normal, right? That's mm -hmm. what they want. And then it's opposite right. in the improvement season, you know, and, and it goes to, to, you know, peak week. Like they're so afraid to eat. And it's like, yeah. you look so skinny. Like yeah. this is not bodybuilding. Like, That's right. It is not a who's skinnier contest. Like yep. you, you, you are supposed to look healthy and full. And, you know, so people really women, like you guys have to stop being so afraid of food. Like yep. food is it, it's nourishment and it is supposed to fill out the body so that it looks healthy That's and right. so that you can grow muscle. Like mm -hmm. if, if there's like, we talk about this all the time. Like you guys, we, we, we have to be better at not fearing food. Food is not the devil. It's our choices around food. That is the devil. Yeah. You, can, you can gain weight on an excessive amount of protein. 
protein is not just like, oh, I'm just going to eat protein. I'm going to stay skinny. You could still gain weight. A caloric surplus is a caloric surplus at the end of the day. So that's why it's really important to work with your coach in the off seasons so that we can keep food at a certain way and get food high and get you satiated and make sure that you're not putting on a ton of body fat. You know, I tell people on consult calls all the time, people are like, well, how many pounds do you want me to be over stage weight? Well, however much it takes for you to grow. But yeah. obviously at the end of the day, like it's my job as the coach to remove the body fat when the time mm-hmm. comes. So why would I want to gain an astronomical amount of body fat? But I also don't want to put a number on it because everybody's different in what that's they right. need to grow. What's healthy to you? I don't know. But that's what we're going to work towards each week, making sure that it's not excessive. Right. But then in a post-show situation like this where, you know, body fat's going up one and a half to two pounds each week and I haven't increased food in the last six weeks – Two plus two is not equaling four. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I can't I can't be coach you at that point. Yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. right? Like That's if right. I'm not coaching, I'm I'm managing. I'm yep. managing what you're telling me. Yep. Um it's difficult. That is the yeah. most difficult, you know, as a coach. Boy, for, for a girl who's like, I have to be like this this week. <laughs> well, I was just saying more of like the dirt, I know, I know. The dumb but, stuff. Yeah, I know. But it's, it's funny because like, we, I think we both have a lot of Monday check-ins. I, I know the majority of my clients check in on Mondays. So it's like I get hit with all the stuff this morning and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I haven't even seen my check-ins yet. It's only 8.30 here. So. Oh, true, 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 true. I am. I am three hours ahead of you. That's true. Yep. I got the majority of my clients done already. So yeah, it was the first thing I did this morning because I got a busy, nice. busy day. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. I've got a very busy day today. So I like well, I had to sit that, down. Let's start our question. I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, I had to sit down and get this stuff moving because it just if I otherwise I'm not gonna get anything done. So, so today yeah. we are going to talk about vitamins and why they're super important for our bodies. So here's the deal. We all know that vitamin D3 helps us absorb more calcium. Well, this is vitamin K, partner in crime right here. So The really cool part is that while vitamin D does its job in getting calcium into our system, it's vitamin K2 that takes charge making sure that calcium ends up in the right places, like our bones and our teeth. Um, So without vitamin K2, calcium can go rogue and end up in our arteries and other soft tissues. So why should we care about the two of these? Well, first of all, they're tag teaming to promote bone health, and they're also looking out for our heart by ensuring that calcium doesn't build up in our arteries. Uh, Vitamin K2 it's doing a huge favor by keeping our cardiovascular system in great shape. So um, just to sum it up, vitamin D3 helps us absorb calcium and vitamin K2 makes sure it goes to the right places, avoiding any artery blockages or unwanted calcium hangouts. And both of them work together. So it's a win-win situation for our bone health and heart health. So, but yeah, we figured we would go through and do some do some fun stuff and like ask questions back and forth. We both answer all the questions and stuff too. So did you have one that you wanted to start with? No, I haven't even. I'll just okay. pop find. All right, so let's 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 figure out one. Um, here's a good one. So, what's the most absurd piece of advice that you've ever received, and did you follow it? This could be in relation to anything. What's the most the stupidest piece of advice that you've ever been given? Hmm. I really don't know. Um, the first one that I guess comes to my mind is that someone like really prevalent in the bodybuilding space and like my very first years of competing used to tell me not to glaze. They were like, don't glaze. Like you don't want to look like you're sweating on stage or like you're, you know, dewy and misty. So like for my first year and a half of competing, I never glazed because I thought that that's like, don't do that. Yeah. Um, and then when I obviously, you know, started coaching with Jamie and Fit Body Fusion, like I told her that one. She was like, no, I don't glaze. And she's Jamie's like, well, why? And I told her the reasoning. She's like, no, like that's <laughs> not right at all. That's very stupid. <laughs> and my feedback always was like, you have no pop in your physique. And my tan was always off. So like I always had like skin issues there in the beginning. But of course, I didn't have any pop in my physique because I was mad. <laughs> so, yep. Yep. so I guess that's the, the first thing that I could <laughs> Think of. Well, the first thing I can think of, again, you know, this can be outside of bodybuilding, but the, the first thing I think of is inside the, the industry. So obviously we're on that topic, but I was told that you have to eat white fish because that's what makes your skin thin. And not only was it told, said that it makes your skin thin, but it makes it thin like dick skin. That's what I was told. Yeah. That's bikini for sure. Yeah. Well, I guess you were in bigger at the time, maybe. No, I was in bikini at the time. I was in bikini. Oh, okay. At the time. Yeah. No, no. And I was told that you have you have to eat white fish because it makes your skin thin like dick skin. Hmm. Did it work? No. 
<laughs> I've got thin skin as it is. I mean, you could see it. Like, I, I always joke about my, my veins poking out and stuff. I have thin skin as it is. I don't need my skin to be any thinner. And I cannot remember the last time I even ate a week piece of white fish. I can't remember the last time. I... <laughs> I mean, I love white fish. I don't eat it like daily or anything. No. In prep. I feel like fish it, like every day in the prep would be like yeah. overkill. So definitely don't do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know. I've never heard that ever. Yeah. But I will say this because, again, going back to the bro chat thing, I was listening to it a couple of days ago and they had Martin Fitzwater on there. And he was talking. If you, if you guys want to watch this one, it was the most recent episode they had him on. He went to pharmacy school. So he, there is actually a science behind eating white fish, but it's only when you're on certain PVDs. So Interesting. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only, it's only, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to paraphrase everything, but if you want to hear what he had to say, it was like the most recent bro chat, I believe it was just a couple of days ago. So I was like, oh, I can see that. Time. Yeah. I was like, that's the first time I've ever heard that. So yeah, go watch that if you want more information on that. But it's <laughs> that's the only reason that white fish would make a difference. <laughs> that's the only one. <laughs> And, and like most things, it's like, it depends. Is it on peed? Is, is there peds involved or not? For the same reason right. of like the qu question of like fasted cardio, does it matter? Right. It only matters if there's peds involved. Other than that, right. no, it doesn't matter when you're going to give 100%. So yep. yeah, yep. that makes sense. I'll, I'll buy right. that one. <laughs> so that's a good question. Okay, so it's your turn. Ask one. Oh, did I lose you? Did can I lose you hear me? You? Oh, there we go. <laughs> you, I think you my, moved. You touched your... I know. I, I can't. Hear you. I okay, hear you. Okay. If you yeah, could, there we go. You if you could have a it. superpower, but it had to be kind of useless, what would it be? A useless superpower. Oh my gosh, that's a hard one. I can think of lots of superpowers that are very useful. Um, so let's just say if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Yeah. I was like, I would love to be able to fly. Yeah, that would be that would be my that would be my superpower that I'd want. I want to be able to fly. I was going to go with the kind of useless one. I would say to be able to grab things from across the room without getting up. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that would be so useful to me right now. That is useful. That's not useless. Like that's what I was thinking. I was sitting here thinking about okay, can I turn like I can turn like carbs into into protein macros. Like that's what I was thinking in my head for like a useless superpower. So I can eat bagels and it's actually chicken. You know, right. that's, that's what I was thinking. Right. Was useless, useless. But for me, that's incredibly useful. <laughs> right. Any superpower I think would be useful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm like anything that's that's supercharged is gonna be useful. So it's anyway, funny though. Like I wouldn't want to like read one. people's minds. Like I feel like that would make me such an anxious person. Like no, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to yeah, like no. see through people. I do that for a living. Like that's you know, just, <laughs> right? I'm good. That's I just, too funny. I just want to couch rot, and that, if I leave my water bottle up on the counter, I could just. <laughs> telepathically get it <laughs> there's so many of those we can pick for like prepping because you know you could be like okay i burn enough cardio calories just by sitting on the couch you know or i grow muscle but that's just useful. By sitting. <laughs> that's useful these are all useful again going back to i don't i can't think of a useless one like right i don't know i don't know i maybe change colors like sitting on like when you sit on the couch you turn the color of the couch like a chameleon oh you're you know a chameleon I mean? maybe something like that that's not very useful i don't think well if you're trying to hide from somebody I guess, but, but how often do you try to hide from people? Like, that's not useful. Who knows? Oh. Not us, but who knows? <laughs> I'm like, that's the, that's the hard part of that question. That's a great question, though. That's the hard part, of, part about that question is like, that's super. Right. I agree. <laughs> I'm like, but yeah, if I had just a normal superpower, I'd want to be able to fly. Well, you guys can comment it at the bottom if you right. can think of a useless a superpower. useless superpower. Yeah, because that's, yes. that's I. I mean, I feel like anything anybody's going to say, it's going to have a use behind it. Like I feel right. like. I mean, anything super, like you said, would be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go on the same same vein of these. I like the funny ones. So, uh, what is the silliest reason that you got ever gotten in trouble? Okay. Um, so when I was in high school, um, I was always like the mom of the group. Like okay. I was, I was always the designated driver. Like I literally was such a good kid. My dad mm -hmm. has no clue how good he had it. Yeah. Um, so I was, I had a Jeep Grand Cherokee for my first car. So I was always 
driving so because all my friends could fit in it. So one night we were going out and the girls were drinking in the backseat of my car. They were drinking beer. So they were popping off the tops of the, the beer caps or whatever and drinking. I was not drinking, never drank that night, whatever. So my dad went to go wash my car that same weekend or something like that and found a beer cap in my car and freaked. I was grounded. It was bad. And my dad is like one of those that like screams at you. And then when he's done, he says, don't say a word, go up to your room and just, I'm not talking to you for two days type person. So I was like, okay. So I couldn't even like defend myself. My best friend ended up calling him and was like, oh, wow. she did nothing. I swear it was me. It was this person. Like we, oh, I good swear for her Jordan. standing up. Yeah. So, but I had to go through all that weekend because my phone was taken away. So when I saw her at school on Monday, she's then she called after Monday. I didn't ask her to. It was very sweet of her, but that was, that was brutal. And then he never apologized. I just, he came into my room one day and gave me my keys back. And I was like, Okay, I think I'm off. I think I'm off the hook. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I, I'm like, yeah. And on my end, I was a good girl too. Like, I didn't do anything. I never got in trouble ever. Yeah. Yeah. So I can think of one thing. Um, I can think of a couple, and they're not even me getting in trouble. They're like me getting blamed for things that other people did. Just like you were saying, that's where my my head started going when you started talking. So when I was in elementary school. I used to get in trouble because I took too long to eat my lunch. So, wow. yeah, the, the way that they had it set up was like we had to wait in line to get our lunch, right? Yeah. So then I we would sit down, and by the time I got a chance to sit down to eat my lunch, everybody would have me throwing their stuff away and go back to class. Like it just took forever. So I would cry because I'm like, I didn't get a chance to eat. You know what I mean? Like I want to go figure. It's about food. I want <laughs> like I want to be able to eat. So. Like they used to like they would make us throw our stuff away and go to go to class. So I would tell my mom when I got home, I'm like, I didn't get a chance to eat lunch because they made us throw our food away because we had to go back to class. So she came to the elementary school and bitched out the the principal. So I got to every day get my lunch and go to the principal's office and eat my eat my lunch at the principal's office because my Good. mom even bitched about the fact that I wasn't able to eat. So I didn't really get in trouble for that. I mean, I, I did. I mean, I was, I mean, I would scream and cry because I was so mad about it. You know what I mean? So. Well, it's, that is bullshit. Food. I mean, their perception was that you got the same amount of time as the first right. person that sat down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I did get in trouble, but I got, I got redemption for it. Another one that I thought of too, is again, me getting blamed for something that I didn't do. So my sister and I, my sister and I shared a room growing up. I'm the older sister. She's three and a half years younger than me. And um, I was very outspoken. Go oh, thank you. I was very outspoken. <laughs> and, oh. and she, I know. And, and she was the one that just did everything my parents like wanted her to do, blah, 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 whatever. So while I wasn't a bad kid, I was very vocal about things I wanted, not them. And so that kind of thing. So when it came down to it, if there was ever a conflict between me and my sister, my parents always believed my sister and not me. Always. So... My sister had stolen my lip gloss, right? <laughs> I used my money to buy this, this, they were like the, the lip glosses that you like screw together. So you got like yeah. a stack of them. Yeah. So I had this stack of lip glosses that I had, I had saved my money to buy these lip glosses and she stole them and I found them in her drawer and I got pissed that she stole my lip gloss. And I, I went to my, cause she used to do stuff like this all the time. Now I'm throwing my sister under the bus, but she used to do stuff like this all the time. So I found it in her drawer and I went and I told my parents, I was like, mom, I said, I was like, my sister, Heather, she stole my lip gloss. And my mom was like, was like, okay, let me get Heather out here. So Heather's like, no, that's mine. And my mom was like, well, she says it's hers. So it's not hers. I was like, I bought it with my money. And they wouldn't believe me. They would not believe. I threw a fit. I was pissed because they took the lip gloss and gave it to her. I was <laughs> livid like you don't understand i freaked and i got grounded because i freaked out because they took my lip gloss and gave it to my sister yeah did heather ever like say yeah that was never no, never, never no. Not even as an adult no i was like i looked at her i was like i was like you know this is not yours i was like tell the fucking truth i was like you know it's not yours you know you stole this from me like i can remember it clear as day and she deadpan no it's mine i was like can't trust this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly right. And that was the whole thing is like because she was the miss good. We were both good kids. Like we never did anything wrong. But because right. she never defied my parents like I did, 
they were like she was she was the the trustworthy one right exactly Exactly. See, I love hearing these experiences with siblings because I didn't have any. And, oh, like, yeah. Dr- Drew has two brothers. And it's so funny now, like, when we're all together, when they're coming out and telling mom and dad, like, the truth about everything and their faces. I love it. I'm like, get the popcorn. This is so I know. Fun. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm sitting here, just since you just said that, I'm like, I wonder if she would admit to it now. Probably. I know. I, I feel like you should, you should three-way your family and be like, oh, mom, dad, Heather, okay, let's talk about the lip gloss from 20 years ago. I know, right? I'm like, I'm betting she'll still stick to that story to this day. Oh, probably. To probably. Yeah. If it hasn't came out yet, that's really funny. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, but you know what it did is it set a precedent because I was like, no matter what I do, my parents aren't going to believe me over her. So I just got to, I just got to not include her in anything, basically. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And like, just hide your lip gloss better. No, right? I was like, who knew I would have to hide my lip gloss from my sister? Like, what the hell? I was, Especially I was now you becoming a makeup artist. I know, like, right? That would have been I know. Amazing. Don't, touch, uh, I was don't like, touch a makeup artist kit. Because I can remember it like clear as day because she had it stuffed inside her sock door. And I was just like, she stole my fucking lip gloss. I was like. <laughs> when you were yeah. in her sock drawer, were you looking for the lip gloss? No, I think I was putting laundry away or something. I don't remember exactly why I went there. I might have been, to be honest with you. I might have been I might have been looking to see if she took it. Because I, I think now that you say that, I think it was missing. And I think I was looking for it. I think that's what it was now that you're yeah. saying that. Yeah. That's probably what it was. And I found it in her, in her drawer. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Well, All the things. Oh, okay. I'd be very curious to see if you brought her in, if she would. Yeah, she probably wouldn't even it. remember it. She probably wouldn't remember. I remember it like clear as day because it was like it was a very pivotal moment <laughs> for me. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> Next question. Okay. All right, I'm going to bring up this one because this was actually asked to me in one of my check-ins last week, and she's a cutie. So, um. Okay. She asked, how, as a business owner, do you make tough decisions for the business? What's your process? So if it's a really difficult decision, like like multiple layers and things like that, I'll sit down and put a pros and cons list together. Um, a lot of times when something happens, I want to react emotionally, but I don't. Oh, you know, answer, yeah. yeah, if I, if I, if like, if it's an email that comes in or something that I need to respond to or whatever, um, sometimes I'll sit and I'll start to write a, write a response and I stop and I breathe and I, and I'll go away from it for a little bit, you know? Um, and then this is with anything. Like I don't make snap decisions. I don't ever make snap decisions. I weigh out the pros and cons. Um, I go to Dan and we talk it through. And just make sure that we're making the correct decision for the business. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes two will sit there and like, he wants to make a, a rational decision too. And like, no, we have to, we have to think of the goods and the bad parts of this. Right. You know, I mean, a good example, this is not a huge decision, but the, the decision to go to North Americans, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, I promise to be there for these clients. I need to be there for these clients. You know what I mean? Like that while I don't want to go, <laughs> like I made a, I made a decision and I made a promise. So, you know, those are the things, those are the things that I go through in my head and I never respond to something just that, that first initial, like, uh, that's not what goes out. You know, what goes out is my process of, okay, let me look at their, look at it from their point of view. Let me look at it from my point of view. Let me look at the pluses and the minuses. You know, I may lose, like I may lose money up front, but in the long run, I'm gaining, you know, those kinds of things. Those are, that's the process that I take. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like the first thing I thought of when she asked me that was like not responding or making a decision within an emotional state. And more than nine out of 10 times as a business owner, that business is your baby. So you mm-hmm. are going to respond initially emotionally. Right. Um, so I agree with you, Sean, you know, like sometimes you have to take 10 hours or a day to like think about that email or think about that check-in that came through and how you're truly going to respond um, with a constructive and very specific, very detailed feedback response. Mm -hmm. Um, So yes, not responding emotionally. If I feel like that's like, if it's causing that emotion, taking some real deep time to think about it, obviously Mm -hmm. discussing with Drew as well, who's my business partner, and then just asking myself, the deeper questions. Financially, is this going to be a good move for me? Am I going to be spending money up front to get a good return on investment? Or maybe, you know, a lot of choices with being a business owner is yes, but not right now. Maybe this is a quarter two thing. Maybe this is a quarter three thing. Um, And then 
asking yourself, you know, if you do have the financials or the financial backing, how is this going to help you right in the next four to six months? Like this choice, is this going to hinder your progress? Is this going to accelerate your progress? Does it really not affect you at all? So you have to think about all of those things financially. And then also like as a business owner, keeping your peace has to be up front because we get delivered with decisions to make constantly, constantly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are a situation like this where it's like, it's, it, 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 it could be a life changing decision or a big financial move. Um, so just really start, you know, think about that and taking your time. Nothing has to be immediate. I know a lot of yes. people are like in the instant gratification or like, oh, I found this certification. I have to go do it right now. Just take a breath, you know, and really evaluate all of those choices and make sure that it's for, for you right now. And remember, no does not mean forever, just can mean not right now. Yeah. And also something I think that is, is, is an issue with our world today, just I know it's something that I have to think about constantly is just image, right? Because sometimes you're making decisions to create a better upfront image versus what's actually really beneficial for you in the long term. Um, you know, I, I just had to make a decision like that this past week. There was a big decision and it's something that we've been talking about for months and months and months and months and months. And we finally made the decision to go through with this. And from the outside looking in, somebody else might think it was the wrong decision. But from our inside perspective, like you said, the peace aspect of it, it's the right decision, 100 percent. And like as soon as we made the decision to do this, it was like like a whole huge weight was just lifted. You know what I mean? And it's like, you have to do that sometimes. And it's like, you know, you have to kind of say fuck it to the people that are going to see you from the outside looking in and think that it's, think that it's the wrong decision because they don't know what's going on internally, you know? So yeah. you have to kind of get rid of that fear of what other people are going to think and understand that you have to make the best decision for you, your business, your life, your peace, all of those things. Yeah. And being a business owner is hard because in most businesses, we're catering to a consumer, you know, yeah. and just like we were talking about earlier about the IFB and B and NPC, when you're catering to consumers, they have feedback and they have opinions. Mm -hmm. um, and as a business owner, you mm -hmm. have to decide which feedback and which opinions you would need to apply to the business. You yes, can't apply absolutely. all of them. Not all of them apply to you, or maybe it's not something you want to do. Also, you have to be open-minded to some of those feedbacks or things you need to do for that's right. the business. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that Drew and I ha used to struggle with a lot, that our ideas were the best. And, you know, the first two or three years of business, like we wanted the gym to be a specific way and work out with a specific clientele. And it just didn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. We would have never made any money that way. Mm -hmm. um, so then when we started getting feedback from the members of like, well, you know, I think that you need to, you know, go to this team or, you know, do that. And then that's when business really started to open up. So it's hard because, you know, as a business owner, people don't realize like when, when you are owning the company, there's no one for you to answer to. You mm -hmm. are it. And the, the success or the failure of that company really it relies on you. And that's right. a really big burden and a really big responsibility. And of course we want all of our businesses to succeed and have use for our consumers. Right. Um, so it's difficult. It is extremely, extremely difficult. If you're thinking about owning a business, it's great. It definitely has its moments, but it's got a lot of tough ones too. It's Absolutely. got a lot of tough ones and you are handcuffed to that business mm -hmm. for the first three to six years, I mean, it's handcuffed yeah. to that yep. business. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a client right now, she's a nurse and she absolutely hates what she's doing. She wants to go open up a gym. And when she told me that in her check in a couple of weeks, I said, ha ha, good luck. Like, yeah. because it's, it, it's, it is so difficult. It's, mm -hmm. it's it, honestly hindsight, 2020 looking back, you know, like I probably would have, I don't know. I probably would have, you know, I don't know. I with moving the gym and push, you know, in Florida right now, I'm still questioning whether or not that was the right move or not. Yeah. Being honest, you know, with yeah. it being so far away, the business was most successful, obviously, when Drew and I's hands are on it. But mm -hmm. you know, it's like we can't be everywhere at once. So again, right. here as a as a business owner, I weighed my decision of happiness to move to yeah. Arizona and be somewhere I wanted to be happy versus being handcuffed to my business in Florida, which is successful on its own with my general manager and the, the people there. But of course, with any business, when the owner's involved, it it has, it just has more. It's my baby. Absolutely. Yep. You know, I Absolutely. take care of my baby. I love my niece, but her parents love her more. That's right. You know, that's right. Um, no, it's true. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just, it's difficult. It's yeah. very difficult. Yeah. And that's why, you know, being a business owner, 
is not right for everybody. No, it's, it's not, it's I couldn't not do the, it alone. No, it's not, the, it's not the American dream anymore for a lot of people, you know, like, it's just not like, it's not what it, what it's not what everybody pretends it is on social media and stuff like that. It's not, it's, it's a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah, because the economy is changing so much. The cost of things, inflation, uh, people people right now are not making a ton of money. So it's like the cost of inflation is increasing, but people are being paid less, Less. you know? So Mm -hmm. it's it's how do you keep reinventing the wheel of your product to be cheaper, but but better than the next person? It is it's constant. And just when you think that you've gotten somewhere, something else comes down the pike, you know, it's just this ever changing, like, risk, cool, we're good, balance for a little bit back to risk. I mean, it's, it's and if you want to progress at all, you have to take risks beyond too. you have to you have to make calculated risks if you want to grow or if you want to change or you know if you want something different. And even what you want personally changes over time too. Oh, I, absolutely. You know, I know I don't I don't want to be stuck here in Virginia. I want to be able to do my my work anywhere. And I'm I'm almost at that point where I can do that. You know what I yeah. mean? I don't have to be here for that. That's a big thing that we're talking about now. It's like so you know Dan was born in um in Spain. Well, he was born in Italy, but he, he could get residency in Spain. So we always joke all the time about just selling everything and moving. <laughs> I'm like the, the way that our economy is going, it's becoming less and less of a joke. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it's funny. Drew's mom was asking him a couple days ago, like, would you guys ever move back to Florida? He's like, you have a better chance of us moving to Dubai. She's like, you're yeah. going to move to Dubai. We're like, no, we're not moving no. to Dubai. <laughs> just we're not. Of us moving yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the country. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, especially like you said, like that is for our lifestyles, like, you know, financial freedom and freedom, you know, being able to pick up our laptop and work wherever we are. Like that's such freedom for us. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I, if you asked me that five years ago, I don't know if that would have been my same thing that I wanted. You know what oh, I mean? Me, uh, not me for sure. Yeah. I would not have wanted to be traveling this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But so as like, you change as a person, so does your business. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So eh, anyway, that was, that was a tangent, but that's cool. Awesome. No, did, we, did, we answer the, did we answer that whole question? Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> like, so. and then so we just, we've been going on tangents today. We do that. We do it a lot. That's okay. We do um, that a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to open my freaking pad here to get another question out. Um, let's see. That's a good one. So if you could witness any historical event, which would you choose? Hmm. God, I'm terrible at history. <laughs> the only reason why I know a lot of history stuff is because we Dan watches the History Channel. All so what's your answer? So probably, honestly, probably when they, they hit Plymouth Rock here in the, in the U.S., Okay. Like, I would like to be a part of that because I don't think they realized what they were actually doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> they thought they were going to India, you know? So, like, <laughs> I just like to come in with the knowledge of you realize you're, you're discovering a new, a new country right now. It's like literally the most random <laughs> historical thing. And Sean says, I would like to be here when they hit Plymouth Rock. I thought she was gonna come out and be like, I would want to see a war. No, no. Yeah, no. Or like, you know, when Lincoln gets shot or whatever. No, no, no. I want to see them. I want to see them discover. I know that's a, that's a touchy top topic because the Native Americans were here first. All that stuff. I get that. I would like to see when they discovered America and uh, and got off the Mayflower and all that crap. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna say I would like to be there when we got to the moon. There you go. If that actually happens, see, there's another one. There's this conspiracy theory. That they, They're that all conspiracies. They're all. I was. I was also going to say in the boat when they realized that the world was not flat, but that's also a conspiracy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just mixed a couple of things together too, because Christopher Columbus didn't didn't go to Plymouth Rock. <laughs> No, 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 he didn't. That's totally different. <laughs> Completely, totally different. So you can Says see how a woman like, that understands history. I was, so. I just, you know, I was like, for the girl that w- w- that watches the History Channel, just so you know, these are two Dan very, is gonna different, be so two upset. very different events. He's just two very like, different mm, events. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I would. I, so yeah, I, I'd still want to be there with the whole Plymouth Rock thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that one. <laughs> 
That one. We're going to go with that one, not Christopher Columbus. We're going to go with the Mayflower of Plymouth Rock. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just can't with you. I know. Oh, Lord. Okay, okay well, this is a fun one. If you were a flavor of ice cream, what would you be called and what would your main ingredient be? Rocky Road. <laughs> you um, could also pick one that's uh, current because we're on prep range, so we're not very creative right now. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Um, okay, Rocky Road. What is Rocky Road? I, I think that's chocolate ice cream, right? It is chocolate ice cream. Yep. Okay. With, With? like, it's got, like, nuts and chocolate pieces and, and marshmallow and all that stuff, too. I haven't had Rocky Road since I was a kid, so I can't remember exactly all the stuff in there. Okay. Um, I was I was also thinking moose tracks, but you know who moose tracks are, right? <laughs> Yeah, that has like the re- the Reese's in it, right? Yeah, it's it's the moose tracks are supposed to be moose poop. You know that, right? Like, oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, so it's vanilla ice cream with with like chocolate swirls and the little the little cups yeah. like you talked about. But those are supposed to be considered like moose poop. That's what I have that's a whole why. new appreciation for moose poop, though. <laughs> Especially because my ice cream is like complete, like I would be like birthday cake, like because you're white, full of confetti, vanilla, but with a little bit of sprinkles, you're vanilla and a, little, and a little taste of cake. Just yeah, just. But how is that you though? Like how is that? How is that you? These are not supposed to be things that we're eating. These are supposed to be like the describing us. Yeah, well, it's like I'm you know, full of shit, so that works for the most. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like Smurf? <laughs> I'm Smurf ice cream. Like I'm vanilla. <laughs> I'm just boring. <laughs> Classic white girl. That's what you are. You know, vanilla. Yeah. Um, you know, just give me a PSL and some Ugg boots and I'm ready for October. That's so that's so freaking perfect. Right? <laughs> and I'm sick of the boost tracks because I'm full of shit. So that works. Very hey, I think you I think you picked the right ice cream for you. And like I said, I have a whole new appreciation for moose moose boots. I mean, correct me if I'm, put it in the comments. Like, is it, is it supposed to be something else? I always thought it was supposed to be moose poop. So I could be wrong on that one, too. I was wrong on the Plymouth Rock thing that I just said. So I could be wrong on the moose poop. But I always thought it was supposed to be moose poop. Hey, maybe they had moose track ice cream when they hit Plymouth Rock. <laughs> right? They came to Plymouth Rock and they found moose. moose yes. Moose. Yes. Meese? I don't know what the plural of moose is. <laughs> I, I think it's meese. Moose? <laughs> No, I think it's, I think moose. it's moose. moose. is singular and moose is and plural. plural. I think it's plural too. Yeah. Wow. I think so too. We are definitely really good at English. <laughs> We're smart. So smart. <laughs> We're so smart. We're going to stick to our day jobs, okay? I know, right? It's like, thank God we're coaches and we're not like freaking supposed to be like teachers or something, like professors. We're not professors. No, especially, I I, do, are you, I have like five words that I can never spell right for the life of me. Like, oh, I have I'm, lots of them because now I rely on One of them on, being referral. Check. <laughs> referral. <laughs> yeah. Can I'm they- trying to think. Um, I, the one thing I am very good at is the they, there, 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 that, you know what I'm talking about? The T-H-E-R-E-R-E. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm a whole lot. I'm really good at that. I'm good at that. I know the right ones. So. I get confused by lie. Lie, lay. Yes. And die. Die. Another one too. Like D-Y-E or D-I-E. That's another one too. Yes. hundred percent. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that like I have to look at because the, the problem with stuff like that is because spell check doesn't catch it. So you I know. just have to, you just have to know. I spell referral always wrong and definitely always wrong. And I use yeah. those two words all the time. And necessarily. Unnecessarily. Necessarily. Necess- necessarily. That's a, yeah. That's a good I, one. I, that one's always wrong. Yeah, always I wrong. just keep typing. I'm like, fuck it. I know it's spelled wrong. I don't care. <laughs> that's why I do. That's why I do voice texting all the time. Cause then I get the, like, I do the voice dictation so much because then I don't have to worry about spelling. I know. I usually can't do that because Drew's usually working right here, but he's out of town. Uh, so I can today. I can yeah. wait. Hopefully I'll get through some check-ins pretty fast. I'm a pretty fast typer too, but. So I was sitting there. So I have the voice dictation on my laptop too, right? So I'm sitting there doing check-ins this morning and I'm just, I'm just taking a break, uh, having my breakfast. I'm scrolling through reels and this reel comes up, pops up of um, like 90 day fiance and they're all cussing through the whole thing. And before I notice it, all of what they were saying is typed in, inside the, the text box of one of my clients on Trainer Eyes. And I was like, ah, delete, 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 delete. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. We can't send that. That is 
has happened to one of our coaches before. I will not say who that they were having a private a private conversation I behind I heard closed about doors. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it, I heard about and, that, and it got sent to the closet. You know, I didn't, definitely didn't send, send it. Yeah, no, I, it caught my eye because I looked up at my laptop and I was like, I just see all the words being typed in. I was like, it's listening on my phone. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be careful, really careful, really, really careful. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm petrified of that. Yeah. So anytime I put the voice text on, I'm like, is it off? Is yeah, it yeah, off? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because typically what I do is I have it open on a, on a document and I, I talk into the Smart. document first, make sure I got everything right, then I copy and paste. Especially so- when Trainer Eyes is very known to just delete everything you just wrote. Yes. I've made... I don't do that all the time. You make one wrong move on your keyboard and it's gone. And, it's gone. and you're like, okay. Oh, all the time. Start all of that again. <laughs> yeah. All the time. And at least yeah. on the documents, like if you hit something wrong, you can go back and hit undo and it all comes Undo. Back. I know. No, <laughs> not on trainer ice. I definitely I did, did that undo, this morning. And nothing, get, nothing happens. I'm like, yeah. I definitely did that this morning. And there's sometimes that I'll do voice, uh, like voice check-ins, like where I actually talk to the client in their, yeah. in their trainer eyes versus typing it. And sometimes it won't actually send. So I'll be sitting there talking to them for like a five, like a five minute message I'm sending to them on their trainer eyes and it doesn't send. And I'm like, are you kidding? Now I have to say yeah. all of that all over again. I don't even know what I said. Yeah. And the first time you do it, it's never like the first it's time. Never. It's never. so good when you do it the it's, first yeah, time. Yeah. It's never as good. It. Never this yeah. Time. I know. Because I do those when, when you clearly need to hear voice inflection. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to text yeah. it. I want you to hear me say it. So I do those when I when I want to communicate something sensitive or whatever. Sure. Sure. So it's like, yeah, you can never go back and replicate that emotion again. No, absolutely. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's our uh, complaint on trainer eyes for today. <laughs> um. So are we? Am I? Am I on me? Is that or is it you? Or are you the next one for the? No, I did the ice cream one. Oh, that's right. Ice cream. We're, we went way off board with ice cream. Okay. Yeah, literally. Um. All right. Pick one and pick your final one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Pick a good one. Some of these are really good, actually. Um, what's the crazy? Like this, we can um, add them a few to each episode yeah. too. So if you like yeah. them, put them on the bottom. Yeah, comment. Let us know if you like this this kind of stuff. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's What's the craziest rumor you've heard about yourself? <laughs> I've got a few. What's the craziest rumor that I heard about myself? <sighs> There's just like one in particular that I could think of. I'm trying to think how I can say it. Um, so one time there was, I don't even know how this came about. I think Jamie is the one that brought it up to me. There was a rumor that was started that I was talking about someone on my stories on social media and I barely talk on social media as it is. So when this person was upset, um, it it was brought to Jamie's attention and then it got brought to my attention. And Jamie even replied back to the person that it was brought to him be like, Jordan, Jordan Brandon. (laughs) She's like never on social. Yeah. Um, But they basically were saying that I was like talking about like their placing on social and like my position on it. And um, it, never happened ever oh God. ever happened um and the rumor was spread and there was a lot of people like that believed it and i was like i swear like i didn't say this didn't say it. yeah i and to this day i don't think the person believes me um but i heard then through the grapevine months later who told that person that and it kind of makes sense but yeah. um that's why I'm like so protective of like myself and like yeah. I I am yeah. truly like the biggest cheerleader backstage for like all athletes. Like mm-hmm. I don't care if you don't like me. I I don't you know I don't care. Like if you have a tag sticking out, like I'm gonna fix it. Like if I feel like something's off, like I'm gonna fix it. Like I want to compete against you at your very best. And like yeah. I truly do not hate anyone. Yeah. Um, 
you know, so it's, it's very difficult. Like that's, that is the hard part of the sport is that it's so small and there's yeah. like just, you know, a lot of things and there it's so easy for rumors to get spread and you could say something and not mean it in that way. But of course, everybody, especially in prep is sensitive and sometimes they hear it how they want to hear it, not how you are saying it. Mm -hmm. So in this sport, especially you just have to be so careful with like what you say and how you say it. Um, so that's, that happened to me very early on and I learned mm. right away, like, just don't, don't speak about anybody. Don't do any, like, just yeah. be in your own lane. So yeah, that stuck. And especially cause she was a top Olympian and like now we're like on the same stage together and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I think eventually, hopefully we can like have a conversation about it and be fine, but I truly never did it. But when it came up, I was like, me <laughs> <laughs> most of my story is my athletes like i barely have time for that. yeah no i get that stuff all the time and I, you know i come from a little bit of a different perspective because before i was ever in bodybuilding i was modeling right so i yeah. did a lot of stuff so i was on before social media was social media i was all over the internet <laughs> and i still am so yeah. it's like you know so i would see stuff post up about me that was completely wrong and i'm just like and people would run with it you know i think the craziest one i ever saw was i saw this person say that they had dated me and that i was a crack addict and drug addict and that i had a son and oh totally I, yeah mm -hmm. and um and that i i was an absentee mother because i was a drug a drug addict I this was, was like, all really? online or they Correct. said this yes. oh, it was all wow. online. it was all online. oh yeah. wow yeah 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 I was like, like on one of these, these boards and stuff talking about, cause I did Playboy for those of you that don't know, that don't know talking about the, the girls that, that did all that stuff. Right. So yeah, I, 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 trust me when I tell you, I've heard it all. <laughs> and 99.999% of it is not true. Right. I'm like, first of all, I don't have a child, never had a child, never been pregnant, never even had it. Don't do never, drugs. No, never even had, don't do drugs. Never, never tried crack, never tried any of those things. So, um, I don't know who this person was, but I did not date them. Clearly <laughs> I'm, not, I'm like, is that crazy though? That someone can just like come up with a story about you that is so far off. And it's like, were you just laying in bed last night and you thought to yourself, I'm going to create this story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I read that, cause so what did you do? Like, what was your response? Well, I didn't respond to it. So okay. the, re the only reason why I knew about it is because when I first started dating Dan, my husband, you know, he was Googling me and found these. Like, I didn't okay. even know about it. He found it. And he brought it up to me. And I was like, because he so doesn't you have a son. Yeah. Because he doesn't understand how people can just do this and like make shit up. And he doesn't he doesn't get it. He, like, he doesn't understand how people can just make stuff up about other people. I was like, you do realize this happens every day. I was like, I hear something new about me every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, it's just, I'm like, if I had if, if half the things that were said about me were true, I would have one of the most interesting lives in the fucking world. And I don't know how I have enough time to do all this, but <laughs> like, yeah. apparently I have enough, I've had enough time to be a crack addict and, uh, and, and to have a, a son that I don't take care of. So apparently. No. it's it is it is wild you know it's it's also sad that people feel like they have to do that yeah. especially a man to a woman you know it's yes. it's just very interesting like and and that's the thing is like we don't understand that because it is it's crazy right yeah, it's i would like, never do that to somebody else exactly it's like it is a form of insanity to us yeah because right? we would never do that to someone you know so yeah. it's it, it's not something we can understand um you know i just think people get bored you know they get really really bored and unfortunately they have nothing better to talk about other than you know making up complete rumors about other people and right. honestly like you're you were a model at the time not that it wouldn't you know uh, diminish your career but thankfully you weren't like in an office setting where if, like uh you know yeah. so your you know office person got this and then you're getting fired for something that you didn't even do wrong but it's just well, because that's... your name is out there and your representation of that company yeah like, but again that... going back to that that stuff can help can hurt people because again when that whole thing came up was when i was dating dan and he was like what is this like sure you know he didn't know what the, what the difference was he doesn't know what's real and what's not about me at that point he's trying to learn about me and figure out who i am you know you can literally fuck somebody's life completely up doing something like that i mean thankfully Absolutely. he didn't believe any of it either but he could have been like 
well, why are these people talking so much shit about her? You know, some of the placing doubt. Too. Yeah, it places doubt. Exactly, hundred percent. Doubt can be just as toxic. Hundred percent. You yeah. know, and, and I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, yeah, that's absolutely not true. Like, it's not even, not even fucking close. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know Correct. me. Yeah. He doesn't know me. All he sees is this stuff being talked about me, you know, yeah. like, and not understanding why somebody would make that up. Because that's so stupid. Why would somebody make that up? That, that doesn't make sense. Like, how does that, how does that validate you at all? First of all, you're just an anonymous person on some chat board. Like, why does that even validate you to begin with? You know and I mean? honestly, it's more of a dig on him because if you were a crack addict with a son, why was he dating you? <laughs> right. Oh, and, that's, and that was the whole thing. He was like, I don't understand. Like, and that, that was just the, the one that stuck out to me. You know, there's lots of things. Of course. Things. That was of the course. one that stuck out to me. But yeah. it's like, like, why would these people make this stuff up, up up about her? Like, it doesn't make sense. Why would they make this stuff up? It's like, they're trying yeah. to find significance in some some form or fashion is what they're trying to do. And yeah. a lot of them don't have significance in their own lives. They do it by trying to bring other people down. Yeah. So, and I think to some people, too, like, we're human and, like, we are very tangible, you know, but to other people, like, we're not, you know? And that's right. They feel like they could say something and it's like not going to get back to us or it's not going to hurt us. So they're never going to yeah. see us. But it, it is like we we are human and we see these things and it does affect us. And yeah, oh, it's just be nice. Everybody. Be that's nice. right. It's crazy. And, it's like, and don't spread lies. Don't I know. Words. Well, this is why I've told you we've had this conversation several times where you're like you, you care about what people think about you. I said, I don't give a shit because they're going to make up their own freaking minds about me anyway. I don't care. I'm going to be who I am. That's true. You, yeah, I'm I, like, you either like me or you don't. I'm not going to change that. Yeah. And and I wish I could be there. You know, yeah. I do. I wish I could be there. You'll get there eventually. You'll get think, there eventually. It's good. It gets better, you know, over yeah. the years. Like I never was like who I really wanted to be because I was always concerned about what people would think if I like switched careers or I didn't yeah. do this, or, you know, and I'm definitely more over that now. But again, like that's my old, my story. I tell myself in my childhood trauma, I'm still working through and things like that. But yeah, it's, it could be debilitating. And it was for years. Yeah. It was Absolutely. debilitating. So, you know, at the end of the day, people are going to say what they want to say. And especially in a sport like this, you know, so you just have to, we talked about this before, tough skin, keep getting that yeah. tough skin. Yeah. And yeah. keep your, your tribe close. Like once you yeah. find your people, stick with your circle people. smaller. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. You circle know, there's, smaller. A saying, there's a saying out there that if you die with with a number of uh, people, your friends that you can count on one hand, you've had a very, very rich life because most people can't. I agree you know? with that. So, I mean, small, small, small circle. I can count on less than one hand the number of people that know everything about me, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. You know, keep your, and they say keep your friends close, your enemies closer, but I say keep your friends closer. I mean, just, just the truth. Yeah. My enemies yeah. can fuck. My enemies can fuck off. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I would say that's a great way to end it. I no. think. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go to discover nice. Plymouth Rock uh, with Christopher Columbus. We are changing history right here on Behind the Kahina. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh my god! I swear, I am <sighs> an actual blonde. Just so you guys know. So just, 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 just. And I'm, and I'm, I'm five weeks out from five. It's the five week out freak out. That's what I'm blaming it on right there. That's, that's all it. you have to Five say. Weeks out. That's all you that's have it. to say. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. As we see all the freaking veins coming to my forehead, I got to go get my Botox touched up. It's my two week appointment. That's what I'm doing right now. Have fun. So, have fun. Yeah. Fun times. Mm -hmm. So um, we are out for today. We will have another live in person podcast that we're going to shoot on Sunday. I will most likely upload it probably by Monday because we'll be in Pittsburgh. So I'll get, when I get back home, I'll upload it and everything like that. Um, but other than that, this is episode 52, 53, yep. 50. 52. Oh, no, maybe we said 53. it right. I said, we said it right at the beginning, but I don't, now I forgot. Uh, it's all right. We'll have it right. 53. Now. 53. It's episode 53. 53. I don't know if we said it right at the beginning or not now, but we're at 53. So <laughs> enjoy the rest of your Monday. Get all your check, client check-ins done. Um, I am good. Go I've, I've got a webinar tonight for Cuties Conference stage two. So we got that going on. Um, Perfect. That's rolling out tonight. We're taking more ticket sales. That's it. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the buttons wherever they are. Bye.